Jesus. Unstained, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, he has no need as though he had to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. Since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the holy places, in the true tent, that the Lord set up not man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that the good things have come with your priesthood. Thank you, Father, that through your priesthood, by means of the blood of Jesus, we have access to the throne of God. We have access to the throne of grace. And so this morning is evidence of that as we sing and worship you, as we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Father, we know that our praises are like sacrifice to you, the sacrifice of our lips. And we know, Father, we have confidence and boldness to approach your throne of grace because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the name that is above all other names. No name can be compared to the name of Jesus. Our high priest, the one seated on the right-hand side, of his majesty the one seated in zion as the king of kings and the lord of lords and so we sing to you oh god we reverence your name this morning yes lord thank you jesus what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is, the name. What a powerful name, what a powerful name, nothing compares to this, nothing compares to what this. a powerful name, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your name. We reverence your name today. We lift that name higher and higher than any other name. Let your name rule and reign in this service. Let your name show itself strong in our situations today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And you may have your seats. Thank you for coming. Uh, this morning is my uh, pleasure at the Children's Church, if you could go. Thank you, worship team. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. If you're here for the very first time, we also want to welcome you. You are very much welcome in Sheffield Community Church. Uh, those of you watching us for the first time online, we also want to welcome you. Or oh, those that have been following us for quite a while, you're also welcome. 
just to remind us, if we are online, we are open. You are now free to come. We've got your chair reserved for you in here anytime. I just want to take this moment to welcome a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, good friends of ours, because he's traveling with his wife, he's not alone. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel Chatawe is not new here. Uh, we have not seen him since COVID days, but he's back. <laughs> we thank God we found him. <laughs> but it's our pleasure to welcome Pastor Emmanuel Chatawe and his wife, and Nima. Uh, these are lovely friends of ours from Coventry. Uh, they lead a ministry called Coventry Fellowship Christian Church. Uh, they're part of uh, our salt and light uh, family of churches, uh, a sphere that calls, it's called Momentum that we are a part of. So we are laboring together in the United Kingdom as part of salt and light ministries. A man who loves God, a man if you have been to CCFC, uh, you won't forget their worship. Uh, they, they love worship. My goodness. They, 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 they really go for it. And so he's going to come and lead us. Um, I mean, he's going to come and minister to us this morning. Uh, please, my brother, if you could come. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful to be here. Good morning, everyone. And um, it's so lovely to see you all. And uh, you know, as we all know, it's been a, a blessing, but a tough time. But the Lord has been wonderful to us. You know, seeing you here is a blessing. So thank you so much, Pastor Anderson, and uh, uh, our mom here uh, of the house. And we want to appreciate you and uh, thank you for you inviting us to come back and to be with you. It's a blessing for us and we don't take it lightly. We thank God for your life and what you, you are doing here in Sheffield. So God bless you. Can we just appreciate pastors here? <laughs> you know, sometimes some churches, they don't do that, but you know, it's good to appreciate people. Don't say they were really good when they are not there. We want to honor you when you are there. Amen. I've come with my beautiful wife, uh, Nima. She's with me. And uh, she has just warned me not to say too much because we are online as well. <laughs> and so can you please stand and wave your... Hallelujah. And uh, so uh, we've got uh, two boys, uh, 23 and 20. And is it 19? 19. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so they are ministering uh, in our church today and so we bless the Lord and uh, you know it's amazing that my wife this year we're going to be 20 years uh, I mean anniversary uh, and uh, <laughs> is it 25 <laughs> you know I, I did it purposely so she can say something <laughs> 25 you know I mean She's looking 22. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, we thank the Lord. And uh, it's a blessing. So we pray that the Lord will give us a good time together here in the house of the Lord. Can we just stand for one minute, please? Let's use our voices and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
voice again. Hallelujah. 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 Just raise your voice. Let's just worship our God. Father, we give you glory and we honor your name. Father, we give you glory and we honor your name. Thank you for who you are. And thank you that you are a great God. Lord, we honor your name this morning, Lord. And we give you all the glory for who you are and for what you do in our lives, oh God. Oh, we praise your name, Father. We magnify your holy name, our God. There's none like you, our God, our King and our Redeemer, our God. What can we say, oh Father, being here this morning is just your glory and your grace, oh Father. Thank you for your mercies, oh God, that endures forever, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, that we can breathe. For the Bible says, in you we live, we move, and we have our being, our oh God. So, Father, as we come to your table, Lord, let the blood of Jesus Christ cover us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord, that you're going to minister unto us, O oh God. Let the grace of God fall upon us, O oh God. Once again, we call upon your name and worship you, Lord, for you deserve all the glory and praise your Father. And we ask you this, Lord, in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Give him glory as you sit down. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we are on this wonderful um, theme that you have been going through and I hope you have a good time. I had a chance to listen to some of it and uh, it's really, really wonderful to know and to understand that we can have a time to reflect on making a room for God. It's so wonderful, particularly when we reflect on what is happening around us. And I think it's really right for us to think about how can we make room for God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God bless you, uh, the angels of this house, for coming up. Uh, through the leading of the Holy Spirit with this theme. So we are going to uh, consider a few things um, this morning about make room for God. And um, let's begin by looking at our, the scripture, the main scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, and we read from verse 2. Isaiah 54 and verse 2 and 3. Expand the space of your tent, or the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtain of your tent, and don't hold back. Lengthen your tent. Ropes and drive it in tent pegs. Let me read from New King James Version. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtain of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and uh, strengthen your stakes. Amen. Amen. I believe that is what is helping us to 
really think about how can we make a room for God. It's a call from God who is asking us, who is encouraging the people to make room for he was and he was about to do something for them. So the context we see there, as you have already seen perhaps, Israel at this particular time they were in a state of unfaithfulness which made them to be taken into captivity. But we see God's love and the grace of God towards his people. And we see that God is promising them to restore them. It's a promise of restoration from barrenness, shame, and affliction, and a call, an encouragement to say, you have been afflicted for a while, but I'm just asking you by faith to start stretching your tent. Amen. Because I remember you, you are my people, and in my own mercy and my grace, I want to come back and invite you. And I want you to multiply. It's a promise for multiplication. Hallelujah. And enlargement. And also, it's a protection and a stability. And this morning, as we reflect on the story and the context of what God was doing to these people, I want us to begin to think about our own lives. That this too is his invitation. That God is calling us to stretch our hearts and our tents at the temple of God. God is saying, stretch your mind, your heart, and your soul, because I'm about to come to bring you to where you need to be. Amen. Amen. And I love our God. It doesn't matter what happened last year, this year, God is still faithful. And He's calling us. He always remembers us. He always wants us to come into that fellowship. We may be unfaithful sometimes, but He remains to be faithful. Amen. You remember what the scripture says? Though we may be unfaithful, but He is always faithful. And so this morning, it is in my heart that you see from the point of God and His grace and His mercies calling us to come into that fellowship. Now, I have a few examples that we'll be looking at as an example of making a room for God. You know, sometimes I was sharing something somewhere and I said, sometimes God doesn't need a lot. He just needs our availability. Amen. Amen. And let me disturb you. I don't know whether you do this in this church. Tell your neighbor, are you available? I know you are sitting there. I know you are hearing me. But you know, there are people, for example, the sons of Scavers, they were in the church. And they were imitating and following others. And when they saw some things and a song going on and people preaching and, and casting demons, they say they imitated. But they were not part of it. And you know that story. I want you to be available for God. Because when he said stretch your tents, he's calling us. That's how I see it. He say, make my room for me. I'm coming. And so let me see this first example of my friend Zacchaeus. I love him. 
I know this story, some of you remember it from Sunday school. And um, in the book of Luke 19, Luke 19, chapter 1, uh, 19 verse 1, we read, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was what? Rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because the crowd, because of the crowd, for he was a short of short stature. So he was rich, but he had some limitations. <laughs> and I love that balancing. <laughs> you cannot have everything. <laughs> Thank God. God is not a respecter of persons. <laughs> you know, we read on, so he ran ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Today, the Holy Spirit wants to come in your home, in your house. Uh, I don't know whether you catch that. <laughs> so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when he saw it, when they saw it, they all complained. Those church girls and, you know, where I come from, we sing a lot. I'm sorry for the guys online. You know, freestyle. You remember my freestyle. <laughs> So you can be singing, but you are not meaning it. Sometimes we sing the songs rather than singing it to the... Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, people are rubbing shoulders with Jesus in this journey. You know, some of them asking some wrong questions. Well, so what do we do with this pandemic? What does it mean? Do we need to come back to church? Or, you know, a lot of questions. But one person had a purpose to stretch his tent, his temple, so that Jesus may come in. Just watch this space. Hallelujah. Amen. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying he had gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone, by false accusation I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. Friends, if we go back to my slide, there are a couple of points we need to learn from Zacchaeus. We are talking about stretching our tents. Now, you know, you know, I know you know the story. I see somebody who was hungry for God. Remember, the attitude of rich people. They are too civilized. And where I come from, if you meet a, a, a rich person, talking to you is difficult sometimes. But this man was rich, but he was hungry for 
I said making room for God requires a genuine desire to see God. And I pray that we have a genuine desire to see God. Hallelujah. So Zacchaeus longed to see Christ. What did he do? Although he was a chief tax collector, and he was a very short man, but he ran. And I, I, can I ask you to try and imagine this short man running ahead? And some of us, when we come even to the church, we are too civilized even to lift our hands. Now, I'm not coming here to condemn you. This church is a wonderful church. But where I come from, people do not want to worship. They want the praise and worship team to stir up their spirits so they can worship the Lord. These things must be personal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You personalize it. It's about your story with the Lord. He did not care about his stature, his status, and uh, whatever he has, he wanted to see Christ. And I see something meaningful when we think about making, uh, enlarging the tents for our God. Making ourselves available with a hunger and thirst for God. So he ran. And then he did not just run, he made an effort to climb. Maybe people were laughing at him. Look at him. But he didn't care. Now Jesus saw the desire. And he came to that place and said, Zacchaeus, come down. For I've seen your hunger and your desire. I want to come. You know, Isaiah 54 is, is a call that stretch your tent self ready for I'm coming back it's a, it's a partnership it's a relationship it's a relational it's something that you do when God is about to come Amen. it's a preparation you run, you climb you pray, I will come to that hallelujah, you worship you don't care the environment it's about you sometimes your family hallelujah Amen. And for me, the pandemic has taught me something about the church. Thank God we are here. But my life with the Lord has to be my life with the Lord. Amen. My wife one day stand on her own before the Lord. So Zacchaeus made something that attracted the attention of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus went into his home. It's amazing that when Jesus sat into his tent, something happened. Jesus, when Jesus comes in your heart, comes in your heart, he changes everything. The anointing will make things. You begin to see yourself. Even this morning, if you are opening your heart, if you open your heart, you, you begin to see where you are. You are, you are enlarging your territory, uh, you are enlarging your tents or not. You begin to see from the inner heart. You know, when Jesus sat there, this rich man said, he was convicted, he said, if I've robbed anyone, I'm ready to restore this. Because now, I can see where I am, where I'm standing. I want to be right with God. Amen. I think this is really a very good example for us to reflect on. Because Jesus is calling us. And he wants to come. Now I thought about the contrast of this story. For us to understand, let's go back to chapter 18 of the same uh, 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 book. Luke chapter 18, we will see the person. It will help us to perhaps see the importance of 
coming to the Lord genuinely. And I'll read quickly. Verse 18. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and dispute to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Now, the reason why I'm reading this, you might be confused and say, we were going very well with this story. So where is he going now with this young... I want you to see two different people and how we respond to the call of God. They are both rich people. Zacchaeus was rich, but you see he's ready to stretch the tent. He's ready to run. He's ready, he's in the church, and everybody, he knows his position. He's ready to say, I need to change this year. I need to make room for God. I know my position in my spirituality. So I'm ready. But the other one comes. I saw pastor, have you seen my, the way I do things in this day in the church? And actually, I think I'm doing better. What do you think? <laughs> this young ruler said, you know, what can I do to inherit eternal life? But deep down, there was no genuine desire to see God. Do you see those two distinctions? And, 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 I've kept everything that you have described since my youth. That means I've been going to church. Oh, you know, these things, you know. Even the, preacher, the way he preached today, you know, there's another preacher who would do better. Because I've been listening, particularly the one online, you know, there's a preacher. He preached on this particular, particular verse, and it was so powerful. You know, when you are, you are so familiar, and I thank God for pastor, we prayed about familiarity. When you are so familiar, you miss some things. Because you already, even now you are saying, oh, Pastor, you would have interpreted this way. <laughs> There's a way you are missing this. Familiarity. I pray that we get rid of that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So he said, I've kept this. But Jesus, looking into his tent, he said, there's something missing. Go and sell. There's something that is, occupies your heart. Go and sell what you have and then follow me. Remember what Zacchaeus did? Jesus did not say anything, but he just sat in his tent. Tent means your soul, your spirit, your life. Amen. And then he left the church. Please don't go anywhere. <laughs> you know when we preach something and you're not happy, you said, where do you bring... No, no, no. You said he's your friend. Are you sure? <laughs> well, <laughs> these kind of preachers should not be coming to our churches. And he left the scene and he was very angry. You know, sometimes it has got, you know, it's not about even the preacher or anything, it's about yourself. Amen. How you position yourself. You know, I give this example all the time. You see, when there's a power cut here in this building, it's not necessarily that there's power supply somewhere, a transformer is not working. We better look into our main switch here. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. You just need to go and have a look your main switch, whether it's on or off. I love when I'm dancing and people are laughing, but you know, it's of your business. 
it's, it's, just, it's just me and my story with the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you like it, whether I'm going off key. It's, it's just me and my story with the Lord. Zacchaeus ran. He didn't care about the status. Some of us, when you're singing, Hallelujah. So making room for God, it takes somebody who is serious with God. A desire. Come as you are. Run as you are. And Jesus is observing. Hallelujah. Amen. He will come. Even this morning, this afternoon, he's ready to come. Amen. 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 Let's go to the next slide. There's another thing that needs to be done if we are to make a room for God. Creating an environment where God rules. Please let's read Second Chronicles 15, verse 1 to 19. And it's so, it's so, it's too long, but I will be uh, skipping. I don't know whether you can give me that scripture or we can just read. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. Did you hear that? If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Let's read on. For a long time Israel has been without a, the true God, without a teaching priest, and without a law. But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord, God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. And in those times there was no peace uh, to the one who went out, not to the one who came in. But a great turmoil was on all the inhabitants of the land. So nation was destroyed by nation and city by city. For God troubled them every, uh, with every adversity. God troubled them. You know, let me s stop there for, for a minute. Sometimes we... You know, there's this kind of prayers where your focus is on the demons. In the name of Jesus, there must be a demonic oppression here. I bind you with the blood of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's to do with God not being in the atmosphere. And when God is not present, then you can be sure somebody else will be there. Let's go on. But you, be strong and do not let your hand be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Let's go on. And when Asa heard these words and the prophet of Oded uh, heard these words and the prophets of Oded the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities where he had taken in the mountain of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord. He restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those who dwelled with them from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, for they came over to him and great number from Israel uh, when they saw that the Lord is God was with him. So they gathered together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the 15th year of the reign of Asa. And they offered the Lord 
At that time, 700 bulls and 7,000 sheep from the spoil they had brought. Let's read on. Then they entered into the covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts, with all of their souls. Hallelujah. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Then they took an oath before the Lord with a loud voice, with a shouting and trumpet and ram's horns. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought with him all their soul. And he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Let's just stop there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For me, this scripture, if we go back to my uh, slide, it, it does resonate with the idea of make room for God. Do you see that image? Amen. So King Asa removed all abominable in the land. You and I, there are things that we need to remove from our hearts, our families, our lifestyle, so God can occupy our hearts. Amen. He removed all idols and banned idol worship. One of the things that Pastor Anderson has been saying is about communities and large in our society and communities. How do we do that? By prayers, reaching out, allowing the Holy Spirit to come in. But I can tell you what is going on around and we are hearing about Halloween and other things. We need God to intervene in our lives. You know, one of the things that God hates is worship of idol. You shall not have any other gods except me. Amen. When our hearts are occupied with other things, it's very hard for the presence of God to be with us. I can assure you of that. I've tested it. When my mind is preoccupied with the social media and, 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 and the politics and other things, there's no room for prayers. There's no room for God. And so this afternoon and this morning, I'm here to encourage my beloved sisters and brothers that we need to make room for God by removing some idols in our hearts, in our families, in our communities. How do we do that? Some of it is through prayers. We will come to that. Re he restored the worship of God in Israel. He dismantled everything, and including his grandmother's idol worship. And I thought about it. Sometimes you need to confront your story, your family, and what people are doing in your family. Amen. Because it can affect your life. Don't just embrace what is happening in your family. You need to really pray about it. He removed because he wanted God to reign. That is the meaning of stretching the tents for God. And I love the way he's doing. Do you see this? Hallelujah. That one. Cut it down. There are things that I see in my life that need to be cut down. And I, I stand here before God, needing the grace of God, that God, I'm trying hard. Some things are still there. I need you to help me to have courage, to be bold, to stretch my tent so you can come in and help me. God brought peace and stability in Israel during this time. You know, when we allow God to come and reign, he brings peace and stability in our own families, in our own life as Christians, in our communities, because we have allowed God to reign. Amen. So, there are things that need to be cut down. 
to be, to be quick. Another thing that is really important for us, and I wouldn't finish without saying it, and I know it's repetitive, because Pastor Anderson has taught about it. But let's take it a little bit further. There's no way I can be a Christian, a firm believer, somebody who is stronger without prayer. Make a room for God through prayer life. Now, there's something I've said there. Prayer must be our lifestyle. And I agree with that. It should be something that is out of relationship with our God. Communion with our God. But again, prayer of faith releases God's promises. Listen to me as I'm about to conclude with these two slides, and then we will pray. There are promises of God already that has been declared in the word of God. But for those promises to be manifested, or to manifest in our own life, in your life, you need, I need prayer. Let me say it again. There are things that God has already said. I will bless you. Stretch your tent. I'm coming. But unless we pray, we won't see the manifestation of the promises of God. It's easier to rely on the grace of God and the message of God. But the prayer unlocks even the promises of God. It's a spiritual law that we pray. Remember, one of the things that amazes me is when Jesus was really tired and saying, God, um, if it is possible, let this cup go from me. Because the flesh was crying. And remember, he had prayed, and then uh, he came to disciples. They were sleeping, and he said, pray so you do not enter into temptation. But when Jesus was agonizing, what happens is that the heavens released the angels to come and help him to keep on praying. Oh, come on, are you following me? At least the guys online, they are following me. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? The Son of God, he had said earlier, I can even call the angels in heaven to come and support me. Now, here he's praying but he needed more support from heaven to keep on praying. Why? There's something, it's a spiritual law for us to pray because God in his, or his love and the way he has given us dominion, he wants you to have freedom to allow him to operate in your own sphere of influence. He does not interfere in your own life. This is why, you know, he doesn't force anybody to come. He said, open your door, I shall come in. Amen. Oh, come on, you guys. Maybe this side. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me try this side. You know, he says, I want you to open the door so I can come. Amen. You know, he was going to a mouse and he pretended like he was passing the, the village. He was passing, going to another city, not Sheffield. But you know, those two, <laughs> listen, those two disciples, they said, would you please come in? Amen. Oh, come on. This, uh, you are sleeping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. They said, would you stop in our home? Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. I love that scripture. When Jesus entered their tent, he took bread Amen. and they blessed it and he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened. Amen. What if they, they would just let him go past to Coventry? <laughs> and if we are good enough, we will say, Jesus, would you please come? Our tents are ready. Amen. Oh, you would have clapped for God. Hallelujah. 
Now, making room for God, there are promises. I, I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm about to, I will finish. Jeremiah 29, verse 10 to 14, I, I'm telling you it's a wonderful story. Unless we pray, nothing will come out. God is saying, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years, you will come out. That's a promise. Now, you know that we always quote the scripture. I know the plan you have for me. You know, it's a plan of good, not of bad. You know that? Yes. You can say it from morning to evening. <laughs> Nothing will happen unless you go to your knees. Yes. It's a spiritual law. Listen, uh, verse 12. After God has promised... Then he said, catch this, please do not forget. Then you will go, you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Amen. I want you to catch this. Forget all I've said, mm. but catch this. Mm. He said, I know the plan I have for Shelfed Christian Center, Community Center. Amen. I want you to flourish in the city. I want to bless your personal life. Uh, I know I want you to have a better end and a better future. But you shall go, you shall call me and pray and then I will hear because your prayer will unlock my blessings. Hallelujah. You know, I, this issue of claiming, you know, these days, not this church, these days you hear preachers, uh, I, I, I receive. I, uh, I, you know, I, I attach myself to that anointing. It doesn't work that way, my friend. <laughs> oh, I, I attach with that altar. This altar is very anointed. I attach with you. Attach with Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, Hallelujah. <laughs> you will go and pray. Let me, let me give you another scenario and then I'm praying. Amen. There's a gentleman, his name is Elijah. Elijah said that the rain, I hear the sound of what? Rain. That was in the spiritual realm. I hear the sound of rain. You know when you, you, you have faith on something and then you believe it but it has not yet manifested. But you see he told Ahab go and eat the bread but I know what to do for the rain to come down. I'm just paraphrasing quickly. Then he went and knelt down. You see God has said one I will bring rain. But for the rain to come, he needed Elijah to go to the Mount Carmel and pray. So why do you think you just need us to pray for you? The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Not being prayed for without ceasing. <laughs> Shall we stand? And then <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just need to pray. And ask you the Lord. Lord, help me. I need to be like Zacchaeus. To stretch my tent. And help me to be able to pray. Maybe there are some idols that need to be brought down. Lord, I pray that you help me. So I want us to pray together.
Father Lord, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and for what you do in our lives. Lord, I have spoken your word. And we are all your people, oh God. And I pray that, if, Father, you may help us in your grace and in your mercies. That, Lord, we may be able to stretch our hearts in, as the temple of God. That, a God, you may come in and make a difference in our lives. That, Father, we may have courage from the Holy Spirit to tear down all idols in our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command right now, in the power that it comes from the name of Jesus, that every idol, every demonic oppression, be cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no power of the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every chain over the people of God is broken. Every power of demons. Every activities of the demons and the evil powers in the spiritual realm. Every spirit of heaviness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we tear you down by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And we release the grace of God. Lord, allow your power to come in, oh God. And help us, oh Father, to live for you, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you will help us, oh God. That, Lord, we may be available for you, God. And also may I have the heart to pray. For we now know that a God, unless we pray, something will not happen. So Father, I pray for your children, our God, and myself, that a God, we may be able to open up and make a room for you, God. So that you may move in our heart, in our families, our God. And every bondage is broken. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message and we hope that it finds you well. We also hope that you've managed to take something away from today's message and that you can apply it into your day-to-day -day lives so that you can make more room for God. We hope you have an amazing week and we hope to see you in person soon.